What is going on right today? We're back with a brand new AEW ringside exclusive review on the AEW Unrivaled ringside exclusive Switchblade J. White figure. Now, this figure was shown off quite a while ago, and it is one of the new ringside exclusives over there, ringsidecollectibles.com. You can go over there, use promo code MDTOYS, save yourselves 10%, but today, I'm excited for this one, man. We have a really cool looking figure here, like J. White a lot. You know, I think a lot of people have been waiting on an official J. White for a very long time, and this is going to be that perfect scale J. White figure to put into your wrestling action figure collection. Whether you collect Jazzwares, AEW, Mattel, WWE, or whatever it is, man, this may be the best Jay White fully posable action figure ever made. And it may actually, the more I think about it, I know he has had some figures here and there, but not a fully articulated to scale, really nice version of Jay White, to my knowledge. I could be wrong. Maybe somebody out there has done. But we've had customs in the past, man. This figure looks really awesome, though. Can't wait to get into it with you. But this is, of course, ringside exclusive. But what's really cool is you have your switchblades here, and the middle one does have the silhouette or the indention there, so you can see see him poking through. It's got three of those. On the front, it says Switchblade J. White. And on the bottom, six pieces. Spinning around, it says Switchblade J. White there. On the back, it does have an image of the man there. And then at the top, it does say Switchblade J. White. And it does have this tape here, which I've already removed. But you can, of course, reveal the tape there. And then you can pull this sleeve off. I haven't really figured out which way it goes better, but I'm going to pull from the bottom right here. And pretty damn snug, not going to lie, but it does reveal the figure underneath here in the front viewing window. But the figure does look pretty nice, man. I thought that, you know, when we first saw it, his head sculpt may be a bit big, but you got some really cool details and stuff going on here, but on the side, you have the Switchblade AEW logo at the top there. Other side, we have the same deal, and on the back, you get a nice autograph signature of Jay White, and then you have him there, and then it does say Switchblade Jay White with the logo there, which is really awesome. Reminds me of the Bruce Lee logo. Don't know if that's on purpose. Have no idea, honestly, but nonetheless, man, what we're gonna do is crack him out of the packaging, find out what he's all about, and see how this Jay White fits into our entire wrestling action figure collection. So here is Switchblade out of the packaging, and I'm really enjoying this figure, man. It has me excited for some other figures here. I'm really interested to see how he's going to fit into our collections, because you guys know we have seen some scaling issues from AEW and Jazzwares over the last couple years, especially, and I'm intrigued to know how he's going to fit in there. Is he going to fit in nicely? Is he not? Is he? We're going to find out here today, man, but really good first impression, I'd say. I am pretty impressed with it. Always wanted a Jay White that was like this, and so having this figure here, and it's a figure that, honestly, kind of forgot about. I forgot it was kind of coming out this quick. Quickly. And, and now that it's here, I'm very excited to have it. So I'm excited to dive into it with you, see what it's all about. But you guys know how it works. We're going to run through the accessories you get with Jay White, and then we'll take you through the figure itself. So getting into Jay White's accessories, you do get a decent amount here for a ringside exclusive. Now starting off with the standard head sculpt that comes on the figure out of the packaging, you have this slight smirk, and I'm not the biggest fan of this head sculpt. I think it makes him look a little bit older than he actually is here. And what's funny is he kind of looks like my grandfather, my great-grandfather who passed away in 2005, God rest his soul. And you know what's kind of funny about that is his name is Jay White. That's very odd. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be, I don't know man, look into that with what you will, but beard looks a little bit weird, I don't know, it, it looks just, it, it, like the shape of it, and I know that Jay White does have kind of this square goatee going on, but I don't know. There's something about these head sculpts that I don't really care for. I think I like this one better. I think the yelling one has better expression. It has more likeness, in my opinion, but I do... I don't hate the head sculpts, but I definitely like the yelling one better. I don't know. There's something about it. It just has more character or life or likeness to it. I think this one looks a little weird to me, but I don't I don't hate either one of them. I just think that the yelling one is better in this case, so there is that, but both of them are good. You know, he's got the hair going down the back. You have the ponytail in the back. It's pretty good head sculpt, I'd say. You know, it's not earth-shatteringly good, but eh, pretty quality head sculpts. But something I can argue for that is earth-shattering quality is going to be this damn good jacket right here. Now, I will say it is that stretchy material. If you pulled this hard enough, you could easily tear it, I think. I don't think it's, like, necessarily flimsy, but if I wanted to rip this jacket in half, I could do so, because I'm a grown man. But the red color is really nice. I like the buckle down here. I like the just, I don't know, the inside of it looks pretty quality and nice, and on the back, you do have the logo with the Switchblade era. And this is pretty damn good. I like this a lot. I think if you wanted to, you could acetone these, these designs off and put this on a Finn Balor. You could put this on some other characters, maybe an Adam Cole or something of that nature if you wanted to. You could put this on a slew of characters, but I do like this jacket. It fits well. It looks good on the figure. I am very impressed with this jacket. I do have a loose seam right here that I gotta cut off probably, but this is damn good. It's a damn good jacket. I will always love cloth goods like this. And it's red and it has the white insulation, so you shouldn't have to worry about any staining whatsoever. And then the final kind of true accessory is going to be his switchblade necklace with the switchblade down here which looks really good and it fits the figure well reminds me a lot of the supreme edition or supreme collection kenny omega necklace very similar in the way that it fits the figure and everything like that really contorts to it it's not too big or anything you know nailing
handling, you know, necklace scale is pretty tough because the emblems and stuff is always going to be a little bit too big because it's so hard to capture details that small. But it's still very well executed. I think they did a good job here. And I'm glad they included this. Really just, I don't know, underrated design here. But it looks very, you want to be careful. It looks very thin there at the top. Don't pull that apart. And then for interchangeable hands, you do get a left mic holding or gripping, gripping style hand. And then on the right, you do have a right fist. So you don't get a pair of these or a pair of these. You get one of each. And then you do get a pair of shooter hands, which we've obviously seen multiple times over. But you do get the shooting hands for each. So you can do the double guns or one gun hand if you want to. But this is no stranger to this line. And then you get these signature Switchblade J White hands, which I really like because these are better scale than Samoa Joe's. You know, Samoa Joe's were pretty tiny. And these have a good skin tone. They have a really good shape. They're larger and more in scale. So if you wanted to put these on your Samoa Joe, you may be able to. That may be something you want to look into. But these look really, really good. I'm glad that they included these. And this is a nice pair of interchangeable hands to have. So getting into the head sculpt, we already kind of covered my feelings on this head sculpt again. Not perfect likeness, but good enough. I'd say, I, you know, I don't, I don't love the head sculpt, but I don't hate it. I think it gets the job done for the most part. But going down into the torso and such, this is a torso we've come to know. They use this torso quite often. It is very similar to the Kenny Omega, but it's not quite the Kenny Omega one, I don't think. I think this is more of the Young Bucks or the Cody Rhodes style torso here, and you're getting the same shoulders and arms here. No pinless, so that's kind of unfortunate, but in this video, we're going to do a torso swap with a Supreme Kenny, just to see what it looks like, because freaking Jay White's pretty damn shredded. In his career, he has been shredded, and I think that the Kenny Omega could easily work for Jay White. I don't think it's going to be, you know, something that's just crazy to do, and you could probably even do so with a Cody Supreme if you wanted to, if you wanted that more Supreme look or whatever, you could take off the Dream tattoo, and maybe the neck tattoo, whatever, but white wrist tape on there, nothing there. One thing I really like is the sculpt work on these legs here, you know, you have that kind of stitching and seam rip that Jay White likes to wear, you have the X's on the belt loop there which look good. You have the blade switches right there, the logos, which looks pretty good. And all this is textured. This is all on there. It's not like it's printed on. This is all sculpt work there, which is pretty hard to replicate. So I think they did a good job putting those lines into the tights and stuff. But you get the red colorway in the white designs. And then on the knee pads, you have the open knee pads, which allow for great articulation. And then you do have the logos on the knee pads there. Same sort of Bruce Lee. It, it's got to be Bruce Lee inspired, right? I could be wrong there. Maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but I do like the boots as well. You have the kind of taller boots, not the standard ones. And then it does have switchblade there with his uh, his logo down there as well. And then on the left boot, there is nothing. But very good just feel and hand of this figure. Like overall, I'm really liking it. He can look down pretty good. He can't look up that much because of the hair in the back, obviously. But ab crunch, it is an AEW figure, so the ab crunch is going to probably be a little bit better than a standard elite. You do get the shoulders rotation there. Bicep swivel. You do get the double jointed arm there. You get a hinge and rotation at the wrist. And I've noticed that the hands are not loose on this figure, which is good. And then in the legs, he can kick forward right there. You get upper thigh cut. He can do the split out to the side there pretty good. And then you do get a nice tight double jointed knee. You get boot rotation there. Ankles go down and up and you get a pretty damn good ankle pivot. So the figure's posability and feel in hand is pretty damn immaculate, man. I mean, I'm not, I don't find anything with this figure to be egregious. I really like to pose him around. He's very fun to pose around. It's actually one of those enjoyable pose around experiences. But one thing we got to do is get some comparisons in here. So for our first figure comparison, we do have Colton and Austin Gunn here from Unrivaled Series 16. You know, a little bang bang gang action. I did not like that. You know, no Juice Robinson or anything, but it is cool to see these up next to each other, even though they don't match in gear or anything. You know, I still think this is completely necessary to do and see up next to each other. They all scale well, all using very similar formulas here, but they are different in their own right. But I think this Jay White does scale pretty damn good, man. I mean, I think all these guys are six foot, six one right in there, and I, uh, I think this looks pretty good. And this is probably about what I would say they they scaled together, I, I guess. I don't know. But I think they do scale pretty well. And then for your WWE Elite figure comparison, we do have an Elite Seth Rollins, an Elite Cody Rhodes, and an Elite Finn Balor, so you can kind of see the scale here. And again, I think they all scale well, man. I think, you you know, I don't think if you did some posing together and you did some matches or you did something like that, I don't think you're going to hate the result here. I think that all of them do look good up next to each other, and I think that they will all form fit together in a collection. I don't think you're going to be like, oh man, who the hell made that figure? I don't think that scales together. So I think that is a good sign there that all of these, for the most part, I mean, pretty much scale pretty well. I mean, his head sculpt is pretty much on par. I don't know. I think that this looks pretty good here. And then for our last comparison that I want to do here, I do want to bring in the Supreme Collection Kenny Omega in the, you know, in the Supreme Collection there. San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. And I think that, for the most part, these scale pretty good together. You know, I don't think that that's an egregious comparison. You know, if maybe given an inch or two, but I mean, dude, that, that looks pretty good 
good to me. I don't think you're going to hate that. I think that you could put these guys up next to each other. Now, one thing I do want to do is a simple torso swap here so you can see if this would be something that you'd be interested in. Now, I am noticing possibly the skin tones not matching completely, but... We will have to see what comes of that. And I actually, I may like that more right there. I mean, dude, Jay White's pretty damn sculpted himself, but I think you could easily get away with that. If that's something you'd want to do and make a Jay White in supreme form, you could do that right there. So, you know, he can do the butterfly joint and get you a little bit better articulation. Wouldn't have to worry about the pins in the arms, give you a little bit bigger biceps. I think you could make that work there if you wanted to for your Jay White. Damn good figure, man. Really, really good. I think it's high quality. I really had a lot of fun playing with this figure and posing him around, but I think that is it for your Jay White figure comparisons for this Ringside Exclusive. But I think that about wraps up our AEW Unrivaled Ringside Exclusive Switchblade Jay White figure review, man. Really impressed with this one. I actually think this may be one of the best AEW figures of the year when it's all said and done. We probably will do our top 10 AEW figures of the year, excluding the Supremes. I know we don't get as many at a clip that we want, but this figure's really damn good. I like it a lot. I think the head sculpt's maybe a bit oversized. I think that there are some questionable things there. Don't think it's a perfect likeness. I think the beard's a little weird. But at the end of the day, it's damn good. It's a damn good figure. I really like the posability of the figure. I like the accessories. The jacket is really high quality. I think his scale is definitely good enough. I think he's around 6'1 or so. I think he fits in pretty good with the among the rest of our figure collections here. And if you're fetting or you're doing photography, you put him on display, he should fit right in there, man. I don't think you're going to be like just egregiously disappointed with this guy one way or the other. I really like it a lot. I think that they have knocked it out of the park with this guy. I like the packaging. I like the figure a lot. I'm really actually happy to have this figure. I really am. Genuinely a damn good figure. One that I'm excited about. It's been one of my favorite AEW pickups a lot. It's been one of my favorite AEW figure pickups this year easily. I just think that it really checks a lot of boxes for me. In hand feel, likeness to the character, great accessories, great presentation. It really does check a lot of those boxes, man. And actually enjoying Jay White's work, that makes it all the worthwhile. I like the gear. I like a lot of the stuff going on, man. It's a really damn good Jay White. And I would say pick it up, man. If you're on the fence and you're like, ah, I kind of like Jay White. I want a figure of him. Easily pull the trigger. Easily pull the trigger. If you don't really care for Jay White or have no real want for the figure, then why get it? You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's kind of just, you know, that, that'd be asinine, I guess. Uh, just buying something just because. But I'm sure I do it a lot, but I mean, I guess I, I don't know. I have the channel. There's a lot. Of, I don't want to go down that road, but anyways, man, I really like the figure. I think you guys will too. It's damn good. I like it a lot, but nonetheless, man, that is pretty much going to wrap up the review. A huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. You guys are unbelievable. Thank you guys so very much for your support as always. You guys are incredible, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys, but this figure is damn good, and that is where I'm leaving it. I think you guys are going to get a big kick out of it at the end of the day. If you guys already have this figure, I'd love to know where you chime in down below if you already obtained it. I'd like to know your thoughts, but I was pretty impressed with it. It feels really high quality. Reminds me of kind of a Cody Rhodes Elite in a way, where it just feels really good in hand. The old ones, the old Cody Rhodes Elite. The one, you know, the primetime Cody Rhodes Elites. That's what it kind of reminds me of in feel in hand and stuff. But nonetheless, I'm getting the hell out. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts down below, and I'll see you guys next time.